Hello, welcome back to Brand Research Chain Left Noding. In this episode, I'm going to share with you some kind of setup that I did in Blender, basically in order for you to create something like this. Um, so what is this? Uh, this is Blender 2.8 EV uh, render engine. Uh, it's displaying this uh, point cloud of data. Uh, you might recognize it from music video from 10 years ago. Uh, let me turn off the subsurf modifier first. So it's kind of running a little bit faster. All right, so this is the point cloud, right? And if I play it back, it's kind of running around 50 or 20 frames per second. It's, it's almost real time. I think probably with proper GPU, it's gonna run even faster. So yeah, this is actually um, Radiohead House of Cards. And the data, I got it from GitHub, um, which is, um, this one right here, so data arts Radiohead. I think this is actually if I go up, it says Google Data Arts team. So, and if you search, see the the title is not like Radiohead House of Cards, but it's actually um, from the official Radiohead House of Cards. Oh, we, we're gonna ignore that for now, uh, but ignore the notifications. But anyhow. This is the data that you can download, and you can. There are three parts of the data: animation data one, two, and then there is also this one right here, which is the applications in order that uh, you can use to preview the point cloud. This point cloud data processing thing is uh, it's not actually that complicated. Uh, these days, you can you can do this maybe using Kinect or maybe using something like structure sensor. Um, Maybe you can even use the iPhone 10 uh, front camera, like, uh, the one with true depth, or even like a, a Magic Leap. I think Magic Leap can also kind of shoot out um, infrared or some kind of something like that. But anyhow, you download the data, right? That's what you, you what you do first, and I'll show you what the data looks like if I go under downloads, and here we go. There's a animation data one. There is animation data too. Let's look at animation data one. So this is actually a bunch of CSV. And looks like there's like a four columns. And if you can guess it, CSV, and then if it's point clouds, maybe this is X, Y, Z. And the last one, probably some kind of a strength. Um, yeah, and we have a bunch of them. I think there are over 2000 CSV files and we want to process it in Blender. How do we do that? So instead of using 2.8 for now, 2.8 I'm using it uh, for presentation, but I'm using 2.79. This is older version of Blender, of course, but still uh, working really, really nicely. 2.79B. And this is what we got. It's really, really simple. This is just a bunch of nodes uh, I'm using Svechok add-on to process the data. So this is the data that's coming uh, as a CSV. I'm loading it as text. And you can see all the thousands of CSV being loaded. And it's really, really simple. This one, this is the Python scripts to import um, all the CSV from the folder. And this is the result. This is actually real time. I mean, not like fully real time, but as I scrub over the timeline, if I change the frame number, it's going to reprocess it and it's going to generate this uh, voxel cubes for me. And the voxel cubes is uh, based on on the point cloud data. Because Blender, uh, if you try to like export out data as Alembic as point cloud, it's not. I don't think it's going to work. Um, I might be wrong. It might be changed, but uh, you need some kind of real mesh data with polygon face in order for Alembic to understand the data. So this file, just a single frame of uh, point cloud data is around 1.6 gigabyte. But as, as Alembic for a thousand of frames, it's around two gigabyte only. So, and with Alembic it's running pretty fast. So let's look at the data itself. Uh, uh, let's look at the nodes. Uh, up here we have some interesting thing that I will show you later. But down here is just a very very basic notes. First of all, 
you have this text in nodes that's kind of loads the the csv and the csv data of course is made of multiple lines and that represents all the points total we have 12,000 over 12,000 points uh, think about it 10 years later like today 2018 we have iphone 10 that can shoot out around 30,000 points of infrared in real time at 60 frames per second this uh, i believe this music video was generated 10 years ago 2008 and the data was uploaded around four years ago look at this this is very interesting um, because if you make your data open and put it on the internet who knows what might happen in the in the future someone look at the data and then they can process it like in this case this is like really nice data that you can study and you can visualize it in different way it actually comes with uh, the audio data, data as well that you can sync I'll do that maybe later anyhow the whole process is not that complicated once again this is just CSV and CSV has a bunch of points of course and then if you load it into something like Spherechop um, you can basically pipe this into a vector vector in and goes into this guy um, in this case I'm instancing box and this is the multiplier for the box and then you will get something like this it's really that simple what's a uh, a little bit more interesting is that because the this is the the data right it only takes one CSV file currently it's looking like looking at 1167 if I scrub the time frame this text will change uh, it takes a few seconds okay see it changed automatically how how is this possible basically I'm using Python that's changing the data input on the fly I'm using exec node mode um, so yeah this is first of all blender have to load all the CSV text data so that's quite big so this is all the text around over 1000 CSV and then I'm kind of filtering it to make sure I'm getting the right data filtering all the text data with dot CSV and then here I'm using frame to get the item so based on the this over a thousand CSV I'm getting only one and then I'm getting only the name and the name goes into this simple Python script this is the variable this is the which CSV data you want to read okay read it from here get the name and then this BPY blender Python will actually change the nodes this nodes that doesn't take multiple input now actually does so that's basically the idea I can maybe I should show you how to do this maybe just a simple a quick one I'll rebuild the whole thing from scratch now um, so I didn't plan this but I'll let let me do that anyway Sphere chalk read multiple CSV this is how I did it uh, the other day when I, I'm trying to do this so I didn't know if this is possible but uh, it's actually kind of working so let's grab uh, the first very first one so this one we don't know what's the point cloud is gonna be looking like but uh, let's see so like I said this is CSV just a bunch of points that are so here text input just load the CSV and just load it so you got four columns four columns like I said if you guess it it's probably just a CSV XYZ vector data and you use a BMS viewer and you're gonna get a point cloud so this is the one of the radio head singer <clears throat> I think uh, but you can see the orientation is a bit wrong uh, let me fix that real quick so I'm I'm using Suzanne as a reference always Suzanne at the grid and Suzanne is facing the correct directions right facing this way so we're gonna rotate this uh, point cloud data um, for that let's just use a uh, rotate first of all let's use Euler make it simple 
let's rotate it in X maybe 90 degree I'm guessing can be maybe a little bit more so that's a little bit better oriented and rotate here maybe 180 degree so it's almost correct we need to move it move using another vector move it in Z and move it in X until it's matching Suzanne more or less so I think the head is actually has some kind of perspective uh, uh, back then 10 years ago probably the, the the scanner is not like really accurate I'm not sure I think they probably just using Kinect I might be wrong. maybe using uh, they're using different system um, yep. so let's just drag this so that's a little bit better okay so there you go that's the point cloud data and like I said if you try to export this out as alembic it's not gonna work it's not gonna load so of course you just want let's say you want to instance a bunch of box you can do that or icosphere icosphere subdivision zero so one two this is the matrices and then it's joining and now the data is becoming icosphere and don't forget we have another data here to pipe into so prepare this properly we don't know what data it has it's a number and we're gonna plug it here anyway this we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.1 that's gonna be the radius of our our icosphere so wait a few seconds so that's taking <clears throat> a bit of time all right that's too big 0 0.02 <clears throat> but uh, that's that's the extra data over here from the CSV the next thing we want to do is just change uh, to make sure the data change as we scrub the timelines we need to bring in more CSV right um, you cannot drag and drop a lot of data at the same time let me do that real quick but I'm gonna do it um, manually anyway so this just bring it into this guy okay that's number two next one number three all right so we have one two three and text okay so we can use object ID selector the cool thing about this um, stretch of notes is that it, it works around all blender all kind of blender uh, type of data maybe I should turn this off for now just use this it's faster and just grab all the text and then filter this out always filter the data the name should contains dot CSV and then we're gonna grab the object ID out oh set okay get the name then look at the stethoscope we get we get three name uh, CSV name okay one two three CSV dot CSV that's exactly what we need and we also need to have list item and here here just a uh, we're gonna use a frame that goes in there and make sure our frame is just uh, from one to three so whenever we scrub the timeline you see the the CSV is changing that's the data that's gonna plug into this text in okay so file save as um, to make it a little bit easier um, I'm thinking to grab that one node that's changing the data maybe I should have just used the script node oh, it's taking a while to load okay this one so this BPY data node groups 
I'm gonna get this node copy and let's go back to this guy and simply paste it here and plug this in there so hopefully it just simply works it says it's complaining about something okay it says CSV2 mesh couldn't couldn't found that this is actually this is the supposed to be the name of this node tree so so now it's actually working so hopefully if I scrap the timeline now it's gonna update okay this one needs to be auto reload and yeah in, it's supposed to work uh, if it doesn't work I might have forgotten something uh, if I duplicate this guy if I reset it if I change this manually look at this ppy.data.notgroup csv okay that's the that's actually the commands that we need to use and plug into this guy right here are they the same so it's kind of correct maybe it's maybe it is working I just need to reload it maybe yeah it is working so the point cloud is changing so I just need to load all the the point cloud everything inside this folder and we are done so that's basically the process it is actually not that complicated um, the app that they provided with this point cloud is the app that's uh, they're using an uh, like a there's an open source called processing and the processing of course can process this kind of data pretty easy and pretty fast as well this data is was captured at around 30 frames per second. This day you are expecting 60 frames per second. And you can do this using, you know, like I said, iPhone 10. That's first. That's really good for face at the moment. But it it, it, it is actually can capture a point cloud at 60 frames per second. So that's good. Um, at some point I'll try to demonstrate that. Uh, but you can also use Kinect or you can use maybe uh, something like magic leap but uh yeah but it's pretty interesting because maybe in the future people will start to upload their point cloud data um, anyway and then if they make it open source someone else can actually process it uh, maybe for you know to remix and to make their like a new kind of arts you know um, anyhow that's the idea thanks again for tuning in hopefully this is useful and I'll see you next time thank you bye